Okay, so uh, who thought this was hard? The time was hard. Yeah, I'm sure it wasn't. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's let's uh, let's remember that next time. So so uh, if you didn't have a calculator and uh, <coughs> then we will this time we will calculate the results for you. Okay? Make sure. I mean if you if you put down the right equation and so on, but you didn't type it into your calculator because you didn't have your calculator, then this time we'll take care of the problem for you. But in the future please bring along a calculator. Okay? And also in the exams. Absolutely, in the exams, hey, you know, bring your calculator. It's your problem if you don't have one, okay? So, uh, okay, so this shouldn't have been difficult, and I guess many, of, most of you agreed, actually there were only one or two hands that went up that said this was difficult. If you found this now difficult, this is sort of an early warning. I, the, quiz, the quiz weight isn't nearly that of a, of a midterm or so, so if the quiz didn't go so well, that's not the end of the world. But now if you don't take action, that may well be not so good for, for 40. So, so make sure that you understand all the problems. Incidentally, some of the problems were on the quiz. I realized I made a mistake when putting the quiz together. They were actually already the sample quiz. So if you look carefully at the sample quiz, then uh, you already knew these problems. You just had to use different numbers. Uh, that may incidentally, I, may, I occasionally make mistakes, I don't know by now. And uh, so I may make that mistake again in the future. Maybe there will be other sample quizzes. Sometimes I will have time to do a sample, and sometimes I won't have time to do a, to do a sample. But anyways, in general, you should have plenty of, of sample questions, examples in the book, and so on, examples that we, that we do in the, in the lecture, so that give you a very good idea of what could be on the quiz. You almost, uh, it almost, I almost could make you make draw up a quiz, right? Uh, so if you thought that you took, you, you took too much time for this, then that's also something that, uh, you know, you want to learn, you want to get a little bit more into, in, into the habit of this. Uh, for example, a voltage divider or so, you really should be able to plot this out. It doesn't take a minute, okay? And uh, if it takes more time, then I understand, you know, you need to get more used to it, but you need to get more into the routine. That also means that when you do homework, don't, uh, if, if you need to, if, if in order to solve a problem you need to go some through the book and read a couple of pages and read uh, uh, an example in the book and so, that's fine, you're learning, but then afterwards do a few of the optional problems so that you can do it without sort of this, uh, uh, all this hand holding or so on. Yeah? How much work do you expect to see? How much work do I, uh, you mean for the grading though, the quizzes? Okay, so uh, so I guess uh, uh, so in general in exams, right? Sometimes you make errors, and uh, if you make a mistake, and we can see that we can see where you've made the mistake, then we may be able to give you partial credit, right? On the other hand, if you only give us the result and it's wrong, and maybe a derivation that doesn't even match up with the result, then we cannot give you partial credit. So it may, so uh, so to it. To the largest extent, it's in your interest to show within reason, right, uh, what you've actually done. That doesn't mean that you need to go to the trivia of, uh, uh, we know that you know how to do additions and so on. Yes? And for the work, do you need everything solved in symbols first, then, then uh, lucky numbers, or? N uh, no, you don't need to solve it in symbols first. Although, you may see that when I solve problems, I can resolve in symbols first. And uh, the reason really is that, first of all, I have a more general result, but also uh, very often I can see more from the result. For example, if I do an, a, an algebraic result, I can immediately see when I've made a mistake with the units. Right? I'm somehow adding a voltage <coughs> to a resistance. That can't be done. Right. If I do it with numbers and I'm not careful writing the units all the time and so on, then probably I won't see that mistake. So personally, I have a very strong bias towards algebraic results, but, uh, but I totally leave it up to you, and in some cases, actually, you do save some time. For example, if you, if you, do, if you have a lot of resistors in parallel and you use resistance, not conductance, then you get all these fractions and the algebra, algebra gets, a, gets a little bit closey. But of course, if you do it numerically, then it's typing the one over button on the, your pocket calculator, and that's very quick. And, 
And so if you're careful, you still will get the same results. So, so I do not have a steadfast rules on how to do it. Right? I have recommendation, I have personal preferences, but hey, you know, you may have a different way that works well for you, and then that's good too. Any more such questions? Okay. So, so, uh, so, uh, just one, one more comment about uh, uh, about uh, the uh, uh, the midterm. Obviously, uh, in order to be to be fair to everyone, we, we want to really see your work, <laughs> not somebody else's. And uh, so. Uh, uh, on a longer question, especially in the midterm, also put down a few uh, a few lines of uh, you know intermediate results and how you actually did it. If really we see only a number, then we wonder whether maybe you've used your cell phone a little bit too opportuni opportunistically, other than uh, other than actually solving the problem. So I mean something in it with with reason, right? Makes sense? Yes. <laughs> Uh, probably, probably for the final we will have a cheat sheet, and so I recommend that you start working on the cheat sheet as you go along in the class. I personally, again, I find cheat sheets, the, bi the biggest value of doing a cheat sheet is that I have to go figure out what I actually should learn, and by the time I've done a decent <coughs> cheat sheet, I actually remember and I also realize what I, uh, what I haven't understood and maybe forgotten also. Also, uh, uh, you notice that at the end of my lectures, I always say, these are the things, these are the skills that I actually expect you to know. So that gives you kind of a guide of what, what of all the, all the stories that I tell you, what probably is going to be on the exam. Uh, and we will go over that just before the exam. Also, also there are, they're already on the web there is a sample midterm. It has more questions than the actual midterm will have, simply because I want to give you an opportunity to, to uh, learn more. And uh, <clears throat> it's totally optional, so you don't need to supply the sample quiz. You don't need to submit a single answer. On the other hand, of course, you can always do a sample and check whether you actually got the same if the right result and the grading machine help. Uh, Quietly, right, uh, we'll we'll grade it for you, and you will will get instantaneous feedback and know if maybe you didn't understand something and come to the opposite. Yes. Um, if we do not have a cheat sheet, will contents be hidden? Oh yes, oh yes. No, uh, <coughs> really, uh, learning by heart is not the thing in this class. Obviously, there are some things like also you need to know that, but the cheat sheet's not going to help you. Right? I mean, if you need to look up that kind of stuff, then you will tell me, you know, the time, there's just no way to solve this in, in whatever, how, how, whatever how much time you have in the meantime. So, yes. <coughs> yeah. If you do some quiz, would you get any extra credit? No. If you do these, these things that are called samples, you do not get extra credit. Uh, uh, it, that's really totally serviceful, just like the extra problems on the homework, they're simply, they're meant for you, right? Some students, they, they solve one or two problems and they've gotten it and they really understand it. Maybe some of you already had a class like this one and you really don't need quite that detail. And for, for those of you, I really do not want to give 20 homework problems that you really don't need at this time. So that's why I make optional homework problems because there are others of you who probably this material is a little bit newer and therefore a little bit more difficult and it may be helpful for you to solve a few extra problems. So that's what the optional problems are for. You, you have to decide that. It's not, I cannot decide for you how many problems you need to solve. Right? The, whole, the assignments is really for you to learn. The fact that they also count for the grade is sort of only because I found that the, if the assignments do not count for the grade, then mysteriously they don't seem to count for anything, and then we have a disaster in the midterms. I don't want that, so, so that's really... But the, the, the main purpose of the assignments, obviously, is for you to learn the material. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so, uh, so uh, let's get back to the course material. Uh, uh, Project. All right, so uh, last time we looked at the design problem. We designed actually something that is inside the kitchen scale. Uh, also a circuit that uh, in very similar form <coughs> in, uh, in a gadget or so that if you turn the gadget, you know this is cheap, you know, <coughs> I rotated the thing and uh, it turns also the web browser upside or right side up. 
so on. Uh, so, uh, circuit design, really creating and uh, uh, thinking of interesting parts and then solving those with circuits, that's what really this class is about. What we want to learn about is how to design circuits, what kind of circuits can we design in the first place, right? Uh, that said, I mentioned that designing circuits is not going to be on the test. You will do uh, one or another example in the laboratory, but you're not going to uh, I, I'm not going to tell you now you have to design God knows a touch sensor in the midterm and well that would be difficult right? that would be too hard a midterm so we don't do that uh, in general also in 40 most of the time we are going to work on relatively simple problems and we will we will, we will figure out what are the voltages and schematics and so circuit analysis and so that uh, so again of course, just analyzing blindly uh, circuits with resistance and so on isn't the most interesting thing in the world to do, right? But again, I'll try to make this connection regularly between uh, uh, analyzing these circuits and using what we learned, analyzing circuits to actually design something that is useful. So uh, bear with me when sometimes uh, it is not so... Uh, it is not so, it, it's not so exciting uh, as maybe last lecture, hopefully was. Okay, so uh, that said, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's try to get a little bit more insight, and that also will help us with uh, circuit analysis. Okay, so uh, uh, this is just repetition. We've talked about voltage sources, we've talked about current <coughs> sources, and they, of course, can be connected to some load that I've shown here schematically as a rectangle. Okay, so we also know how to draw the IV characteristics. How would it look, uh, the IV characteristic of a voltage source? <laughs> yeah, somebody else, right? Uh, so that would be a horizontal line, right? The, vol the voltage source is really kind of a contract that says the voltage across the two terminals of the voltage source is a constant value, no matter what the current is. And so in a mathematical sense, the current could be arbitrarily large, of course, in practice that won't be the case, but nobody wants to pull a thousand amps from a little uh, AAA battery anyway, so what, what happens up here, so we, we just don't care about it. Uh, and then the current source, well, it's very similar, except that now, if, if I did this right, this was a perfect vertical, right? Uh, the, voltage, the voltage is totally arbitrary, but the current uh, has a set value. All right, so now uh, we've already said that real, real sources, of course, don't behave that way. And, and so one, one of the non-idealities or the practical effects that we, that we most often want to model and include in our circuit diagrams also is the fact that if we have a voltage source, then uh, it may have a nominal voltage, let's say again, if this was a list, or maybe it was a car battery, then that would be mm, 12 volts, so, and, uh, but as soon as, uh, and that's where no current is flowing, but as soon as current is flowing, then uh, uh, the voltage is going to drop, and so the characteristic would be something like this, okay? <coughs> So uh, now, of course, notice that uh, if we really did this to a car battery all the way down to what, what do we have to do in, in order to get to this point? What do we have to apply to that car battery? <coughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, this is the short circuit condition, and this is the open circuit condition. Right? So, uh, uh, so, so in practice, of course, before we are going to get there, the car battery, if we would try to do this, the car battery starts getting really hot. And it actually can crack, and the hot acid can come out. So don't do this, right? But uh, because we never go here, we really don't care about this part. <coughs> then this is still a good model. What exactly was here? That something a little bit different. Okay. So the question now is, how would we model this with the circuit diagram? And the good thing is that uh, in order to do that, we know all we need is an ideal voltage source. We don't need a new element at all. We have to add a resistor. And why? Why does adding that resistor solve or problem or model this new thing? Yeah. You have the question or you have the answer? <laughs> so you know. So so like this is now our new model of a
this is a new mod. Oh, okay. So this is the new model. Now we say that everything is that is in the dotted box, that's really a voltage source. And so the voltage V1 is no longer the value of the voltage VTH of the, uh, of the voltage source, but it is the value of the voltage source, including that resistor. So why does that decrease intuitively? How can we see that without even doing any calculation? <coughs> well, then, uh, <laughs> I guess you have it. Is it a question or answer? Why VLTH is decreasing? Why R is there? Well, the so VTH <coughs> is, of course, a constant, right? Because that's an ideal voltage source. But V1 is not equal to VTH, and V1 is supposed to be decreasing. So the question is, why is V1 decreasing? You still... Yeah, well, that, would, that of course would be the case also, but here what we really want to plot is the voltage V1 as a function of the current I1, right? So RTH has a fixed value, maybe an ohm or a kilo ohm or whatever it wants to be, right? And uh, then we are starting with the current I1 being zero. So then what's the voltage drop across that resistor RTH? Zero, right? And then as we increase the current R1, uh, I1, then what happens to the voltage drop, drop across that resistor? It increases, right? <coughs> and uh, and uh, that voltage drop, of course, doesn't appear. Now, if we, we could draw a, a, a KVL loop, right? And then we could derive what we could probably are now. We can see that the, that voltage drop across RTH, that no longer appears across V1. And consequently, V1 is less than VTH. Okay? All right. So, uh, so uh, that's why we get this. And the slope of this, of course, is just uh, 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 mi minus uh, uh, RTH. Uh, uh, is it, does this make sense now? OK, good. A any, any other questions? All right. So, uh, that's how we're going to get here. So, so here again, actually, this voltage here would be ex exactly equal to ah, V T H minus. Touch it really doesn't work very well. Yet. <coughs> and then, the, what, what's the current here actually? VTR over VTH RTH. Over R T H, right? At that point, we have a short circuit. Here we have a short circuit, and then uh, uh, the voltage across the resistor, RTH, is just equal to VTH, and consequently, current Ohm's law is VTH divided by RTH. Okay? If you have a competition, who gets it right or who wrong? Or what? Okay, so, uh, so uh, now here uh, uh, we have a current source and resistor. So, what's going to happen to the voltage uh, V1? Well, uh, if uh, in the open circuit condition, again, if uh, if you are here, I1 is equal to zero, what is the current that is flowing here? No. Ah, yeah, and of course, hey, that is an ideal current source. The current through an ideal current source absolutely has to be IN, right? No matter what. But where is this current going? Yeah, it's, it all goes into this resistor Rn, and so, so the voltage at this point, again using Ohm's law, is equal to In <coughs> times Rn. Okay. And uh, then uh, we can also look at the, what is this condition? And again, short circuit. So then what is the voltage across uh, Rn? What is the current flowing through Rn? Zero, right? Hey, you know, the current will come to that little <coughs> junction, that dot there. And you'll say, now I have two options. I can either force my way through that resistor. Sounds tough going through a resistor, right? Already the name implies that. Or I can go through that nice, wonderful highway called short circuit. 
that just sort of whizzes me through, so it goes through there. Yeah? Okay. So all the current at this point, of course, goes through the short circuit. And what is that current? Well, it's IN, right? Okay, so uh, then we have a current IN here, and the characteristic is going to look like this. Hey, look at this. Uh, what's the difference between the diagram on the left side and on the right side? What would happen if I again did one of these mean experiments and I gave you a black box and voltmeter and ammeter and so on, send you to the lab and now tell me what's inside the black box? Is it a voltage source or is it a current source? <coughs> yeah, we would have 50% uh, who get the test right and the other 50% just by 10 didn't get it right and if you would deviate a lot from 50% something would be very mysterious. Right? So, so what's the difference between a voltage and a current source? Right? Right, the uh, in, uh, practical current and voltage sources are nearly the same. Now, now, uh, if of course we would say, uh, let's say we have a, we have a battery, uh, a battery, a 1.2 volt alkaline battery. Let's say that the output resistance was one ohm, right? So this is one ohm, and this is 1.2 volt. So could we calculate the equivalent <coughs> values here? Well, the resistor again would be one ohm. What would be the current? Well, that's I n. Uh, v t h is equal to I n. Right? If you want to make these identical, and then V t h is equal to I n times uh, uh, R n, and uh, consequently I n is equal to V t h divided by R n, so that would be <coughs> 1.2 amps. Okay. So uh, we could model. We, we could actually say that uh, probably, probably the actual, uh, actual uh, uh, internal resistance of, the, of a AAA battery is probably less than an old. But we could claim, and you can do this, we do this with video also, but we could say, well, you know, uh, uh, we start a new company and we sell current sources, and we we'll just say that the, <coughs> the value of the current source is 1.2 amps and the internal resistance is 1.0. Would we'll be correct. And we do exa behave exactly the same. Of course, that's not what's happening inside. Okay. So, but the, the, so, so in practice, we may want we, we may want we may prefer to call something voltage source because uh, the internal resistance is relatively small, or we may prefer to call something current source when the internal resistance is relatively large. But aside from these values becoming a little bit odd, there's really no difference at this level. Okay. Uh, now, uh, we're going to use this to our advantage in circuits. And uh, uh, how can we use this to, uh, to our advantage? Well, first of all, and I'll show you a number of examples here, we can, we can use this uh, to analyze circuits much more quickly than otherwise. And we'll have an example in just a second. And the other thing is for, for modeling. And we'll look at that also. Very often we, we have a very complicated thing, let's say your lab power supply is so that actually serves the function of a supply, right? And then you can model that entire thing with just the voltage source and the resistor, or alternatively with just the current source and the resistor. Okay. So let me let me make that a little bit more concrete. So let's say that uh, that would have been me, right? If this would have been on the quiz. In a couple, in, in next week, this would be okay, but this week, on the quiz, this would have been a nightmare, right? Uh, sure, you can solve this with uh, writing enough uh, KCL equations and KBL equations and Ohm's law and so on, and being a little bit diligent, I'm sure you can figure this out if you have nothing else to do this afternoon. Uh, but there ought to be a better way, right? There ought to be a way to figure out what, what do we want to know, right? We want to know what is the, uh, what is the power delivered to the rest of the circuit by the source V1, okay? And for that, what do we need to figure out? Well, we need to figure out what is the current I1, and then we multiply the, the two together. That's trivial. Figuring out that current I1, that's where the work is, right? And again, you know, you write, you write a bunch of KCL equations and Ohm's law, and you solve all of them, and if you did it just right, you'll get the right answer, no questions. But uh, we will do this in a much 
much better way that actually the 10 minutes that are left to us, we have just plenty to solve this problem. So, uh, so uh, actually, let's look at this. How could, we, how could we simplify this problem? Well, in general, we can simplify stuff. Uh, if, for example, if this is if they're in parallel or in series, well, then we can replace uh, the two elements, so n elements, by just one. Do you see any resistors here that are in parallel or any that are in series? No. <coughs> right. There aren't any. There aren't any. So the question is, could we somehow modify this circuit that suddenly we get elements that are in, se in series or in parallel? Yes. Uh, source transform V2 into a current source with a uh, resistor in parallel, R6. OK. So we transform this thing into a current source and the resistor. And the current source, hey, in which way does the arrow go? You know that too? It goes up. Great, hey, you paid attention. OK, so uh, you don't think if, if, if now this is, is puzzling, well, then you look at this diagram, right? So this thing here <coughs> is equivalent to this thing here. And here you have the equations on how to transform the element values, okay? So if it's not, if, if, if you didn't realize where the arrow goes, look at this diagram and you sort of can do pattern matching, right? The same thing that you have here. So we can replace this here. What would be the, the current of this current source? Somebody else? <coughs> yes. Right. The, the, the current would be V2 over R6, okay? So now, that's what I've done here, right? Okay. So I've taken this thing here and I transformed it into this. That's what we did. Just. Now can you see any elements that are in parallel? Yeah, now it's easy, right? Now, uh, now these two guys are in parallel and now our circuit, of course, quickly starts looking more simple. So, so these guys are in parallel. We know the value of all the elements and we replace them by just one resistor. And the value of this resistor I call it R56 is ooh, <laughs> circuit diagram went away. All right, so you have to imagine that the top circuit diagram, I actually replaced this with uh, just one resistor, R56. It shows on my screen, not on yours, sorry. Uh, so uh, if I did that, what would be the value of R56? R5 in parallel is R. I think faster than I can write. And <coughs> okay, fine, that's what we have. So here actually, uh, oh, it's again, again missing. So, so at the top, we have that, we have that other circuit. So what are we gonna, what are we gonna do now? Let's look at this guy, right? Let's look, let's look at, let's think about, about this guy here with uh, the two resistors replaced by just one. Huh? So what are we gonna do next? Somebody from, from the back row, yes. Yeah, exactly. So that doesn't, there's no problem, right? If before we had a voltage source V2, and then we said, no, we would rather have a current source, and that became I2, and now we say, now we want to have a, rather want to have a voltage source again, so we will again uh, create a voltage source out of this. And uh, I guess that hopefully does, does show that. Yes, look at this. Now it does show, of course, I couldn't call that voltage source V2 also, otherwise it gets all confusing because the value of that new voltage source, which here I call uh, V3, is what? It would be equal to, yeah, it's a little bit hard for you because only half of the stuff shows here. Uh, it would be I2, the, the value of the current source that we transform, times the resistance that was in parallel, that, that, that was R56, okay? And the value of that new resistor is that this resistor is simply what, what the resistance of the wall, of the current source or which was four, five, six. Okay? All right. So now, of course, uh, I'm... See, this is getting really trivial now. And why does it get so easy? Well, because we understand something about circuits. We understand that the... While, while uh, when we buy a battery, we really think about the voltage source, 
Mathematically, voltage sources and current sources are very closely related, and we can exploit that uh, circuit understanding to solve this problem. And of course, ultimately, we're going to use this to uh, uh, do interesting designs. So now we have, uh, again, two elements that are in series. We can put them together. We get R3. Yeah, the resistor on the bottom is also in series. Yeah. Oh, you're right. R3 plus R7 plus R4, <coughs> so we could call this R3, 4, 7, right? And uh, call that R8, and we already figured out what that would be. Now there is one more step. What do we have to do? Yeah? <coughs> what do we want to do now? Uh, yes. Yes. Precisely. And once again, uh, so this whole thing we're going to replace by and the arrow of the current source goes up. Because uh, the voltage, the plus sign is also at the upper end of the voltage source. Right? It's not always up. I could have drawn the voltage source where the plus sign is at the bottom. right? I could have drawn it upside down. And then, of course, we would have to make the current arrow also going from up down, so there is no rule that the gravity doesn't matter, right? But, uh, but in this case, definitely goes up, and the value of R8, oh, well, we had that already. So uh, here is this transform, so we have a, uh, oh, uh, one, once again, I really need to check my, uh, my slides, half of the stuff doesn't come, but R9, uh, uh, the value of R9 is equal to R8, and uh, the value of that current source is equal to V3 over R8. Okay? And then uh, if we take this thing, oof, gee, uh, I'll, 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 I'll read all this. So what we have now is uh, V1, R1, R2, R9, I4, okay? So, so that's what we have. So there is one last opportunity. Who wants to pick it? One, one last chance to prove that you, you understood it? Yes. R9. Okay, those are in parallel. All right, and then one more, one additional more step. Right. Right. Four goes becomes a voltage source, and so then the value for ten is now a little bit more complicated. Is going to be equal to R one plus. And V5 is going to be equal to I4 times R2 in parallel is R9. Be careful, it's not the same as R10 right there. And then the power is equal to what's the current through R10? Well, what's the voltage across R10? So this is now an example. You can do this in your head. It's KVL. You could write KVL, and we do that in the first two weeks of 40. But now you just can't see this, and if you don't, then you solve a few more problems, right? You find them on the web. So there would be V1 minus V5 divided by uh, R10. That's the current times the voltage is V1, well that's the current dissipated by, uh, by source V1, okay? So, uh, so uh, that's, uh, so just look again what we did, right? This, this thing which uh, something would have given up, actually how many nodes do we have? One last question, how many nodes do we have in this circuit? <coughs> Yeah, six, one, four, one in every node where we have a dot, and then there are two more nodes where there is no dot, right? So six nodes, 
we would have written probably about uh, about five or so equations and use uh, so and so and then we would have to solve them. It's possible, right? Uh, our pocket calculator certainly can handle that, but uh, it's also easy to make a mistake. With a little bit of insight, we could solve this problem much more elegantly. All right, I'll see you Friday.